time to pick on Stephen King again with the Tommy Knockers. Poor Stephen King. Why do I pick on him so much? Why do his miniseries give me so much joy? I know he's written good stuff, but the bad stuff is just so entertaining. His returning cliches and overuse of character traits often transfer so poorly into film. And oddly enough, the more time they have to explain and analyze it, say in an over two and a half hour long TV special, usually the more horrible it is. What's that? Why yeah, that is an ass numbingly long time. So let's not beat around the bush. Let's dive right into the Tommy Knockers. So our story takes place in Maine. Ah, go ahead and take a shot. As for me, I can't play the Stephen King drinking game anymore. I want to survive. But hey, that doesn't mean I still can't plug it. With the brand new home version, you won't ever have to worry about watching a Stephen King miniseries sober or awake ever again. It comes complete with beer glasses, pool toys, baseball hats, and even your very own talking Mr. Toomey doll. Scaring the little girl! So in the state of Maine, we're introduced to Hilly, and he's excited because his grandpa just got him a magic kit. Well, Dad says there's no such thing as magic. Kids and old people. We know that magic's real, no matter what anybody says. There is even a place that's magic. Uh-oh, Grandpa's off his meds again. Out by the Anderson farm. In my day, we called it Big Engine Woods. But it's called Burning Woods now. But no matter what it's called, there's magic there. The engines believed it. I think they prefer the term engine American, but keep going. Magic spirits. You have to keep your wits about you when you go there. And Hilly, never, never go there alone. You know my grandpa told me a story like that too. He also ate sandpaper and called himself Vanessa, but I still believed him. And seeing how this is a Stephen King story, we cut to one of the other umpteen gazillion characters. This is Officer Ruth, and she's showing the kids around the station for a field trip. This, this is where we have our cells, and we put on all the people who break the law in here. That man over there used to molest little children just like you. Go ahead and touch him. Go ahead and touch him. Okay, come on in here. Let's go see the schoolroom. This is the best part. You see, when I was a little girl, my parents used to travel a lot. What the hell? Every time they went to a new country, they would bring me another doll. Now he's your hobby? Oh, yes, they are my hobby. My friends know that I like them, so every time they travel, they bring me one. And suddenly this character got disturbing and uncomfortable. Seriously, what? station would allow dolls inside the office. We don't want to break anything now, do we? That's all right. That's all right. JoJo's never been broken. This is beyond a creepy hobby. This is just unnerving. Does your work allow that? Brian, um, I was wondering if it was at all possible for you to, uh, by any chance, get the report done by this Thursday? Well, we'll have to ask Roger before I can answer that. What do you think, Roger? No. I tried. <laughs> Go. Okay, okay. But one of the children, imagine this, actually gets scared of one of the dolls. They're bad. I'm scared. And to be fair, that does look more realistic than the Jaws 3 shark. Tell you what, why don't you come back some other time and we'll see them together, okay? All alone. Just you and me. Bye, Davey. What kind of cop is this? Does she not know how creepy this looks? And you wanna know what the weird thing is? The really freaking out there thing? All throughout the rest of the movie, she's totally normal. She's easygoing, laid back, a nice person. There's nothing odd about her in the least. Oh, except for that one really fucked up thing, but aside from that, nothing. They say normal people are just people you don't know very well. Well then, by God, I don't wanna know her very well. We then cut to a steamy post office where you can clearly see a red flag always stays up around here. Honey, I'm sorry. I really, I, I think I'm going to have to work late tonight. Oh, Joe, come on. Yeah, will you tell her for me that Becca Paulson likes her husband home for dinner? Yeah, honey, I will. I, honey, I will. I got to go now. Bye. Are you ready? <laughs> am, I, am I ready? Is that your question? Am I ready? <laughs> it's like the sign says, neither snow nor rain nor... Sweet. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, now this is why the postman always rings twice, except he's about to find out that the mail lady really is a mail lady. M-A-L-E! Cinema snob, what are you doing here? Oh, sorry. I thought this was a porno. This is how most of them start out. No, it's a 
Stephen King miniseries. Oh. <laughs> Condolences. Thanks. We then cut to a writer named Bobby, who stumbles across something very odd in her backyard. <laughs> While that's going on, we cut to a poet played by Jimmy Smits, who is an, oh god, an alcoholic. Really? I haven't had a drink in about a year now. Jesus, we got all the callback characters in check. Why don't we just sing the cast that appears in every Stephen King movie? The people live in Maine, of course, there's nowhere else to live With the writer, the alcoholic too The adulterer and his whore Some dumb rednecks, a disappointing resolution Here in Stephen King's mind So Smith is upset because he feels his alcoholism is keeping him from writing any new work Andy often talks about it with Bobby, as apparently they used to be an item. But she currently has her own problems. Like how her dog is acting strange after getting zapped by that radioactive muffler. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who owns half of these animals? I mean, a parakeet is one thing, but an owl, a cobra, a fucking Komodo dragon? What the hell? Why don't you leave? Why don't you get your dog out of here? Can't a kid just play some ball with his ferocious killer Komodo dragon for just one moment? So Smits gets in front of a crowd and reads to an awaiting public. He reads specifically to the ethnicities of Maine, who seem to take up these three seats right here, and the people applaud with delight. However, not everybody is amused! I pay you to read new poetry, not old stuff. When's the last poem you wrote that got published? You're nothing but a drunk gardener. Always were, always will be. Of course, he's not gonna take any of that. He's gonna show her that he's not a drunk by- Why don't we ask him back into that? Getting royally plastered. That'll show her. Shall we maybe go upstairs or just give everybody a treat and do it right here on the rug, huh? Come on. I'm going to Ooh. see to it that you'll never work again, you Excuse drunken, me. contentious, nah. worthless- oh! Well, this is a new one. A writer who's an alcoholic. I've never heard of such an odd combination. Caramba! Hey. Hey. Oh no, he's been taking fencing lessons from Burgess Meredith. Help, help me! You, help you. Is that all you can say, Mr. Power Man, Mr. Uh, Kilowatt? You nooking SOB. If you remember nothing else in this world, remember this. God hates a coward. Well, there's only one dignified way to exit the scene. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, I know we're supposed to feel sorry for him, but that's like the ending to a goofy cartoon. <laughs> he wakes up on a beach after a drunken rampage and is picked up by Officer Blagojevich, who takes him back home. While that's going on, Hilly's brother is frightened by something he hears making noise in the closet. Zoom, motherfucker! Oh! Son of a bitch, ow! Hilly, wake up! There's a monster in my closet! Don't listen to him! Just put your delicious brains back to sleep, doopy doopy doop! Squirt. But Hilly doesn't see any monster and tells his brother to go back to sleep. Can I sleep in your bed tonight? Sure. Back we go, all warm and safe and toasty. No, I don't like the way he said that. And I don't like the way he's snuggling with them either. You know, Maine is sick. Do you know that, Maine? You're very sick. So we see the cheating postman out again, as his wife, Deputy Olive Oil, reminds him that he forgot his sandwiches. For you and the boys? Oh. For your fishing trip? Really, this is great. Well, as bad as he is, at least he appreciates the fact that his wife made him sandwiches. Oh my god, he nicks the sandwiches! He nicks the sandwiches, you fucking asshole! Cheating on your wife is one thing, but throwing her sandwiches out the window? You are a bad, bad man! and hop on in and let's see what we can catch. Aww. So while he's getting a good look at her tommy knocker, Smith meets up with Bobby, who tells him that the strange device she started digging up seems to be making her smarter. Not only does she fix the plumbing in the house, but she also manages to take the water heater apart and fix that too. As I uncover it, it's sending out some kind of transmission. They're turning you into Einstein, huh? I mean, I have no idea how I got the hot water heater to work. I just... No, as I was doing it, everything seemed clear as a bell. 
God, it makes women good at plumbing and machinery? If this thing takes away women's fear of spiders, men are gonna have no use on this planet at all! <sighs> Let's experience it together. But as you'll see, she's not the only one getting the invention bug. Hilly, olive oil, and even the post ho all seem to be friggin' geniuses now. Which might not be good news for Mr. Adulterer. Do you still love me, Jill? What kind of a dim bulb question is that anyway? No, you crazy! You're fra- I'm sorry, no. No, I'm not. Please! Why are you so mean to me? Why is it so mean? Where are you going? How dare you ask me that question? I'm going out now, and I'll be back when I want to. You got it? But, Joe! But! But, but, but! See, I never want to hear that word again. I never want to hear but again, because but is what a goat has for brains. And but is for the small-minded people in this small-minded town. And but is what you say when you want to get away from your stupid little wife. My God! What is this guy? First the sandwich is now laughing evilly while he's off to have an affair? Even Darth Vader would be like, Dude, you're a fucking ass. But olive oil seems to get some advice from an unlikely source. Listen, Becca, Joe, he's been cheating on you. Okay, Chaz. No, no, the correct response is the flying fuck! TVs don't talk. Well, Becca, it appears that this one does. He's having an affair. You got it. Well, what am I gonna do? Kill him. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> now, you might be thinking to yourself, she's taking this way too comfortably well. But let me tell you, when your TV comes to light, there's no point in arguing with it. I know, trust me. Listen, I'm making an offer you can't with you. Oh, wait a minute, this cunt cheese is asleep, hold on. Hey, cunt cheese! <laughs> We're trying to tell a story here, pay attention. Uh, don't even think about changing the channel, I got a hitman pointing a gun at you right now. There's no point in calling the cops, I canceled your phone service an hour ago. And it's useless to get up from your chair seeing how I'll kill your mother if you do. But I guess that doesn't matter because I've rigged the house to explode in just a few seconds. Happy Halloween, Sleepy. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh. So as these two continue to dig up the lost city of Tetris, Smith finally realizes maybe it's best to call the police. Guard! They will come here with, with trucks filled with barbed wire and men with guns and... They'll gag us, guard. And you know that they would do it. E.T. is a true story. All the feds will come over here, they'll take all our stuff away, and then all the guns will turn into walkie-talkies. It'll be weird. And speaking of weird, Hilly's magic trick, using the invention that the crocodile tongue seemed to help create, seems to do its job a little too well, as it makes his brother disappear, but then never brings him back. Hilly, you stop fooling around and get Davy back. Now. I'm trying, but I can't. I'm trying, okay? Okay, where is he, honey? Where did he go? I don't know. I don't know where things go when they stop being here. Come back, Davey, come back. It's okay. I'm sure he just went to another dimension right within the realms of Outworld. Your brother's soul is mine. See, he's in good hands. But it turns out the brother really has disappeared, and nobody can find him. So, the whole entire town shows up, all 12 of them, to help track him down however they can. All except for one person who had to go home early. Oh, Joe left the search early, said he was coming down with the flu. No, he can't be. He seriously can't be. I'll be back first thing in the morning. Okay. Thanks, Becca. I'm going to puke up my lunch if he is actually- OH MY GOD! You left a search for a lost child to fuck the mail lady?! First the sandwiches, then the evil laughter, now abandoning a child to get laid! Dude, you're not gonna find the kid in her vagina! Forget it, Becca's gonna be manning those phones day and night until they find him. Mm. Oh. Day and, and night. Night and day. Mm. I can't take this guy, I really can't. He isn't just an asshole, he's like a compilation of assholes to make the world's biggest asshole. The six million dollar asshole! Gentlemen, we can rebuild it. We have the technology. We will take elements from the world's biggest dick horses and make him shittier than he ever was before. Shittier. Crappier. Straight up cock much. But Olive Oil decides she can't take it anymore and sets up a trap for the dickmeister. Would you turn this junk off? I mean, I hate this show. Turn it off yourself. What did you say to me? I said you could damn well turn on the show to the woman! Hey now, you don't mean that. It's the crackers talking. That's it. Good night. Good day. Oh!
Oh no, I've been blistering! Oh, make sure my coffin is minty fresh. And the inventions keep on coming as Bobby, it appears, put together a typewriting machine that actually writes the story while she's asleep. I'd make a Stephen King joke here, but let's face it, you've already made it in your head. But things get even worse when Hilly suddenly slips into a coma. I'm taking him to the hospital, oh, Terry. No, 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 you two stay here. I'll take Hilly to the hospital. I'll call you as soon as I spoke with the doctor. Ah, yes. Trust the guy who believes in engine magic with the safety of your child. Daddy. And just where is the hospital, you may ask? Oh good! I hear they have a real good health plan down there. Whenever a kid is in trouble, they just walk inside their house and pretend like nothing is going on. Suck on that, continuity lovers! Tommy knockers, Tommy knockers, knocking at the door. So as you can see, olive oil was put in the nut house, and it seems like the rest of the town is not too far behind. Not only is everybody making more Dr. Seuss inventions, but many of them start becoming psychic and acting more crazy. I know a psychic in a Stephen King story. Alert the media! What was it you wanted? Well, aren't you going to read my mind like everybody else has? <laughs> I'm not getting it. The only one who doesn't seem to be affected by it is Smith's, as he had a metal plate put in his head years ago that they think blocks off part of his brain. Probably the part that said, say no to Star Wars prequels. You okay? Yeah, I just needed a good night's sleep. I'm ready to dig. Well, I think you should really take a good look at yourself. <laughs> Why? You're obsessed. You can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop. What are you implying? You're obsessed and you can't stop? I can stop when I want. Officer Ruth starts to catch on as well and tries calling for backup. And seeing how she's doing it in the doll room, I bet you'll never figure out where this is going. What a shock. Too late, Ruth. Too late. <laughs> The Chuck. Yeah, I bet you thought those dolls were just gonna sit there nice and quiet all throughout the Stephen King story, didn't ya? But nope, they hide her body and disappear off to, I don't know, Puppet Master 12 or something. And meanwhile, the post ho has been doing some inventing as well, as she tries her new invention on a pair of dim-witted cops. Is he always so mean and grumpy? Is he like that to you too, Trooper? Or is it just me? I, uh... <laughs> I, uh... I'm just an officer. I don't use big words in front of pretty ladies. Sound like Randy Newman. Officer, they don't use words in front of ladies. I just wish you'd known better than to come snooping around like this. Hold it right there now. Do as he says, ma'am. You wouldn't stop a lady from putting on a little lipstick, would you? No, oh, no, that's true. We do have to let a woman put on her lipstick. It's like Rule 22. Bye-bye, boys. Really? A lipstick death ray? We're actually writing in a lipstick death ray? This is silly even by Stephen King standards. Did they just want a reason to steal the effects from the 1960s Star Trek show? Tell me the scene where she fights Gorn is coming up next. Two disappearances in one week. That's more than a coincidence. It just vanished into thin air without a trace. Butch, have you ever heard of the Tommy Knockers? Oh, hey, the title of the movie, just two hours in, and we're finally going to figure out what it is. Let's see. Last night and the night before, Tommy Knockers, Tommy Knockers, knocking at my door. You said yourself that it was as if they had vanished into thin air. Well, I'll think about it. If anything else occurs to you, give me a call. That explained everything. I'm sure he's gonna rough up Mr. Boogity and the Leprechaun people to find out their location. Or is this gonna be like every other Stephen King story where he makes up a name for something that already has a name? Like, The Shining is just psychic. It is just an alien. Or Langoliers was... Okay, you can keep that one, but to be fair, we didn't want anything. So everyone gathers around the Church of Slimer as everyone is hypnotized by the lean, mean, green machine to keep digging it up. The time for all of us to unite. 
is at hand. Are you ready to complete the becoming? Is that sort of like the happening, only funnier? But the crowd heard that! Inane whisper. Captures Smith and forces him to start digging up the device. Meanwhile, Grandpa and the officer return to check on the town, only to find that it's completely abandoned. But hey, that doesn't mean they can't stop for a nice cold one. Come on, stupid. They booby trap the coke machine! You know, how about like a mine in the road or something like that? I mean, this is goofily abstract. What if military forces aren't thirsty? because this gives me a chance to properly explain what frying the coke is. <clears throat> it's when somebody does something so stupid or phenomenally over the top that you can't help but find it unbelievably awesome. And by God, what is more awesome than being killed by an exploding soda machine created by glowing Nickelodeon slime? Aside from a tiger stepping on a mine in a coliseum where a coke machine is your only salvation. But aside from that, no. So Grandpa goes deeper into the woods to find the evil diggers. At first I thought it was weird that he didn't go back and try to get help, but then again, I guess it would sound odd telling a police officer that a coke machine ate your friend and there's a cult trying to dig up Ecto Cooler, so maybe he made the right choice. But he gets captured too, and it seems like Smith is the only one left to save the day. He convinces Bobby that he's turned to their side, and that only the two of them should be allowed to finish the digging and see what's inside. What is inside the machine? The TARDIS from Doctor Who. No, no, that'd be somewhat creative. No, it's just aliens. That's it. They crash landed and have been here for years, eating up people so they can repopulate. They've been giving you brain boosters, but all they're doing is, is fattening you up. It's a cookbook. It's a cookbook. How does eating people help them repopulate? Why is the town only now being hypnotized by them? Why do intelligent life forms always seem to crash their ships? Never explained. They're just aliens. <laughs> They're just weird. This has all been a lie. <laughs> but they do find some of the missing people, including Hilly's brother. Drop your hand. You okay? Worst magic trick ever. So it's kind of confusing, but I guess Smith throws the Toys R Us alien off the wheel and takes control of the ship with his mind. A bunch of the aliens tried to stop him, which is weird. Why didn't they stop him when he first came in? But Smith's manages to get the ship up and- Oh god, that looks silly. And blows it to hell with him inside. <laughs> and that's where it ends. I shouldn't really say end, just more stops. And with that said, kids, I must ask the question. What have we learned today? Well, I learned there's a rumor that Stephen King wrote this while high off his ass. And honestly, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, yeah, it's stupid, silly, and makes little sense, but it's also kind of like looking into somebody's psyche. Most of the story is talking about how a certain substance increases your creativity, but also increases your dependency. Much like King admitted that's what happened when he was a stoned alcoholic. So in that sense, it's actually sort of fascinating. Seeing one guy trying to get rid of his dependency while also trying to make others beat theirs. But taking that out of it, this actually is one of the more entertaining Stephen King miniseries, just based off of its goofiness. As usual, it's a lot of build-up to a disappointing payoff, but the build-up is always good, and the over-the-top delivery is a ton of fun to watch. Honestly, I say give it a watch. Just don't play the drinking game while watching it, your lungs will disappear. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and Nostalgia Ween is on the way! Lady! Thank you.